Hello and welcome to this lockdown learning video where we're going to take a look at the process of refining master rig presets. So in the previous video, loaded up some presets and compared them in Cubase, which is the way generally I like to work for the reasons that were shown in that video, but it means coming back often to WaveLab to make some changes. So, so having listened to those presets, I decided to use the Alan Morgan Electronic Dance preset so that's the one we're going to be spending a bit of time tweaking just look at the process of it more than anything else and there's a couple of things i want to show you in wave lab so first things first what i generally tend to do is to try and pick a more diverse section of a, a track if i'm working on it whether that's for compression or whatever but this means you are getting a bit more of a composite without having to listen through to the whole track all the time because obviously you know if you've got a seven minute long track or whatever it's you can't just listen to that and make a tiny tweak and so on because otherwise you'd be there you'd be there all week so you need to have a section which gives you a bit of diversity in there and in this case i'm going to pick this bit where the intro that key part then goes into the more generic part so i'm just going to close that for a second and we're going to set up a loop now there's a few different ways you can do that so You've probably been on the edit tab, but on the insert tab, we've got these markers. Now, all we're going to do is set up a couple of markers to allow us to quickly have a loop, which we can then use. So I'm going to start at the beginning of one cycle of the keys, which is somewhere around here. No. And it's nice and easy to do visually on this because it's a stabby rhythmic key part. Yeah, so you can see that there. That's where this starts. So we'll get to the point where you see the little whiskers. And then I'm going to put in a, in this case, loop marker. But actually, the way that I do this, you could do this with just generic markers of regions. But I'm going to click that there and then find the end bit, which is going to be after this. So I want one more cycle. So we've got bass, drum, etc. in. And you don't have to do this on a musical length. I just prefer to do it because otherwise part of my brain gets a bit annoyed that it's some weird loop. Right, so we're there. So this is the end. And again, just going to click on the sort of furry bit there. And now we've got that, that set up. And to cycle this, you can just turn loop on there and then just double click between. WaveLab will cycle anything you've got selected, but that just works well for me. So now we'll have this running and we can open up Master Rig. So what I noticed in here is that if we, I'm just gonna scroll that across so you can see that a little bit better. As we got to this point here, we sail way closer to maximum level than I would like. And in fact, later on in the track, I think we actually go over again. So, because obviously it builds up. But you can, in fact, you can see there, we've, we've gone over as far as Wave Lab's concerned. And this seems a little bit uh, troubling, shall we say. And it's something you need to deal with. And I think it's because the imager is after the limiter. Because the limiter here is in maximizer mode, but the output is minus 0.3. So that's the kind of level we should be seeing. But, but we're not. So what I'm going to do is put the imager before, which I know will change the sound slightly, but... We want to look at a quick fix for this. Reset the peaks here. So we're back to minus infinity and then play that again and then see what happens. So it's in this end section. So I'm just going to uh, skip forward on that. And then. So yeah, now we're seeing minus 0.3 give or take, which is much more like it and certainly if you're outputting for streaming i think you'd, you'd probably want to be lower than that it's there's different requirements for different platforms but yeah just whacking everything up to a peak of minus 0.01 is is definitely not the thing you can do anymore so let's look at some of the other parts of this so i quite like the sound of this say hey, i spent a bit of time listening to the the different presets and i like them this was much nicer than the edm one and the pop one was over the top and the uh, production one was just it was sort of this on steroids and it was a bit too much for me i'm not quite sure about the eq listening to listening to this from here i think it's maybe just just affecting the bass drum a bit too much so because we've got these four bands of eq obviously we can we can either tweak here or you can tweak the controls on screen there or you can tweak it in the eq 
window here. But I just prefer that a bit because it's just, it was cutting out a bit too much of the kick drum, I felt. And maybe the, the tuning of band two as well isn't isn't spot on because it's often things like this need to be tuned but possibly for the key or to match the bass drum because sometimes you'll have a resonance in the bass drum either you do or don't want, etc. So presets always need a bit of tweaking. Probably just give it a little bit more top. So I'm that I'm that I'm happy with there. Uh, so the the bass drum seems to be just a little less affected. Well, it is a little less affected by that. It sounds just a little bit punchier. Um, going through these other controls, the the thing you would really need to do now is to be uh, methodical about it and do different mix sounds. So if I was going to do this for a mix for a client, I would be doing multiple mixes. So I'd possibly change the EQ settings and then see where we get to. So to do that kind of thing, obviously you don't want to end up writing things down and so on, which can be painful. So you've got these stored temporarily here. So you could store five versions. So we can store this in number one. And then let's say we totally lost our minds and thought, yeah, I want to, I want to totally eviscerate everything at 5k. You could then store this in number two, and then you can bring them back. So you've got temporary storage because often with these things, you don't, you don't want to keep them while you're playing around. And then if you've got the final version, I would strongly encourage you to save whatever master. If you're using master rig or any other mastering save the preset that you've done because if you're doing it yourself you'll probably find you want to go back and revisit it at some time and you might want to not have to rediscover all these settings and if you're doing it for a client then definitely do that because people always go oh yeah yeah can you just redo this i get a lot quite a lot few things where people will come back you know three months later go oh i need a you know a shorter version of that track or can you change this or change this bit or whatever and having to recreate all of the mastering that you've done is time consuming and it's much better just to be able to go, right, this is this preset, this is this preset, done. All I've done is tweak the original mix, we're ready to go, and then it sounds the same apart from that one element. So yeah, using these temporarily to store your multiple versions and then comparing these. So again, you'd go through the same process we saw before of doing multiple mix sounds, etc. Then you can fine tune it and then come back in here and save those properly. So again, you do these, so save preset as, and then I name, name things after the client or myself and the track and which mix it is. And then I always know everything's there ready to come back to later on. And also they can be good. If you've, if you've done a lot of work with this, they can be a good starting point for your own experimentation on each track, but every track will be different. So everything will need a bit of tweaking it's a bit like the old story about Quincy Jones tuning drum kits to fit with different keys of songs. It's the same here. Often you find, particularly, say, low-end EQ needs a bit of tweaking to fit with the key of the song or the bass drum because often the resonances in bass drums can be positive or negative things and you may need to deal with them one way or another. So, I hope you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.